Al 650 presents your source for leading edge news and information on today's hottest products and services. This is Experts on Call. Good evening and welcome to Experts on Call. Nice to have you with us on the program today. We're going to talk about your home and in particular, the roof over top of your home and how to protect your investment. We are joined in studio by Sean Lang, president of Interprovincial Roof Consultants. Nice to see you again. Great to see you as well. Thanks, Sean. Uh, just a couple of days into fall 2014 yeah. and uh, yeah. got a little damp in a big hurry, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Holy it's, it's almost cow. like somebody flicked the switch. No kidding. And yeah. we have had the just incredible luck this summer of 2014, one of the best on record, certainly. And I've been here since the 70s, mm -hmm. and this is this summer was just one of the best I can remember. Yeah. How did that turn out? It must have been a great summer for the entire construction industry, including all you roofing people. Oh, for roofing, it's been awesome. I mean, obviously, the one of the main aspects of roofing or one of the, the conditions that a roofer really uh, appreciates is good weather. Yeah. Uh, you know, he can do his roofing without any risk of water getting into the system while, or into the building while he's tearing off the cap of a building. Uh, so this summer has been absolutely fantastic that way. Uh, about the only drawback that any of the roofing contractors have had is that they may be running through the work faster than they thought because they have so many good days to do it. Oh, I guess. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. usually, yeah, it, given our geography and our climate, you sort of have to you have to plan, and you do this as part mm -hmm. of your, you, you map out projects and, mm -hmm. and the amount of time it's likely to take to finish a project. And mm -hmm. given our weather, it's a little longish, generally speaking. And this be, summer, yeah. we've had a, a chance to really get a lot of stuff done. Oh, even August was good. Yeah. You know, and usually the tail end of August can be a little bit iffy, right? So it's been pretty good. Uh, you know, it's a little hard on some of the guys that are actually doing the work, too, because they're out in the hot sun every day. Yeah. And uh, they actually can get worn out pretty quick. Uh, so they have to start to pace themselves in this kind of weather. They can't, you know, uh, the worst thing actually for them is to take a day off and then come back to it. So once they get in condition to the weather and start to wear the proper headgear and wear as much clothing as they can, which is tough on a 30 degree day. Yeah. You know, I never understood these guys that take off all their shirt and cap and everything and they go out in the blazing hot sun all day long and they get just cooked. Yeah. You know, it's actually smarter to wear really light long sleeve shirts and and even wrap something over your head i used to take an old spare t-shirt and wet it and wrap it around my head mm -hmm. and that kept me nice and cool on the really hot days so for the workers themselves they have to really pace themselves and it can be tough on them now you're talking about your experiences i used to do this on hot days and, yeah. and we should take a moment and let people know that the president of uh, interprovincial roof consultants is a guy with a lot of roofing in his background and you mm -hmm. started out uh, in your late teens uh, d doing now i was looking on the website and you describe your early days in the roofing business, uh, working with the the fire mm -hmm. and the gravel mm -hmm. and the tar. Yeah. So that's a uh, that's a while ago now because they don't do much of that type of yeah. roofing anymore. Yeah, do the they? old tar kettle doesn't get used too much. Right, but it was the main tool when I was starting roofing and I was I started out, most guys started out on the ground uh, that's what they called it you start on the ground because you're running the kettle you're uh, shoveling the gravel into the hopper and sending it up to the roof and it was a really uh, back-breaking experience and and with all the smoke and the fire and the you know 500 degree tar that's floating around in the kettle that you have to stir and add more kegs to it was pretty pretty rough especially on a 30 degree afternoon yeah right? yeah yeah, so when I made the leap up onto the roof, I was really appreciative that I get to work in the breeze because now you've got more wind oh, blowing on you. Oh, that's true, of course, yeah. But it's also that much, it's a couple degrees hotter up on the roof. Sure. Right? And then you're walking onto the hot asphalt roof that you're laying down. Mm -hmm. So there's other aspects. You do have more of a breeze, but you also have this extra heat that's coming on you. So I do know what it's like to be working in that condition. And, and how much difference over the years has that made, that you've you've now founded this company, Interprovincial Roof Consultants. You do big leagues to work for for major projects and individual homeowners but all of those years of uh, sweating out on uh, tar and gravel roofs and all of those years just put in learning the trade and learning every job within the trade is must be paying huge dividends now Sean. Yeah, yeah I, I can't discount that at all um, I you know when I was approaching my 15th and a half year of roofing and I was wondering what not I was that you do. were counting or anything no not that I was counting but my body was uh -huh. and uh, I, I started wondering you know what am I gonna do with the rest of my life if I'm at this age and I'm already starting to experience these physical pains that were coming on. Mm -hmm. And uh, the 
consulting inspecting aspect of the, our industry was fantastic because everything that I had learned and every all the mistakes that I'd made and all the mistakes that I've seen other people make and I used to do a lot of repair work so I would go out and fix other people's mistakes of course right yeah. which to me was the best learning experience mm -hmm. because I, I was able to see the things that were failing and then correct them so now now when I'm designing a new roof system I know a lot of those issues that could fail and I don't design them into the, our roof design so, oh, okay. so it really paid a lot of dividends uh, moving into this aspect of the industry when did you start interprovincial roof consultants how many years ago now I didn't start it oh no it was actually started in 1977 by a guy who then sold it to another fellow in about 1982 and he ran it until 2007 when I bought it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm the third owner. And how many staff consultants do you have? You are a registered roof observer, yeah. which uh, one would translate into layman's uh, You're an inspector, but yeah. you don't call yourself an inspector. Yeah. And that's a technical thing. Explain why, and we'll, t we'll talk about the rest of the staff and, and uh, their uh, designations, but why are you an observer instead of an inspector? Well, because of our designation as a registered roof observer, which is provided to us uh, after passing tests and everything with from the Re Roof Consultants Institute in the States, okay. which is actually RCI Inc. is their technical name or their official name. But it's basically the Roof Consultants Institute, and they, they offer up this designation to people that qualify and pass the tests and maintain uh, annual learning credits. So we have to continually learn and educate ourselves. Um, and because we're registered roof observers, we like to call ourselves roof observers right. because that is the term for what we do. But it is essentially just inspecting. But I, I guess their take on it is that we can't see absolutely every single thing that is done on any one particular roof job because we're floating from job to job. Right. We're not there every minute of every day. So we can't inspect and verify, and that's very key, that we cannot verify that absolutely every single aspect has been done perfectly because you didn't babysit the thing from start no, to finish no 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 we've observed right. what we've seen sure and we're reporting on that so we observe and report it's basically the you know the the police serve and protect yep. we observe and report observe right? and report so that that's why we are roof observers um, but essentially it is the same as an inspector we're going up there and we're we're making sure as much as we can that the roof system is being installed to the specification and to uh, proper roofing standards uh, for British Columbia. Right. Now, interprovincial roof consultants, uh, well, have they always been in Cloverdale, or when you bought it, did you move the operation to Cloverdale? No, we moved. We uh, we were uh, on the Surrey-Langley border um, in a leased-out office, uh, which was owned by the previous owner, and then we bought a building in Cloverdale, and we completely renovated it, and then we moved our business in there. How many uh, observers do you have on staff right now? There's five of us. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what's what is the bulk of the business? It's you're a consultant, you're not a contractor, and that's really important to put mm -hmm. out there. And we'll probably do that a couple of times mm -hmm. during this conversation. But what's the difference then between a contractor and a consultant? We don't do the actual work. Okay. Right. So we are a step away from the actual work, and we're hired by the owners or a representative of the owners to act as their knowledgeable eyes on the roof. So where you could get the a uh, supervisor from a roofing contractor firm to report back to you as an owner and tell you what's going on, as you can expect, everything he's going to say is magical and wonderful. Of course. Because it's his company that's doing the right, work. Right, right. But we'll give you an unbiased opinion because I don't really favor one side or the other. And I will take the roofer's side if it's legitimate, and I will take the owner's side if it's legitimate. Mm -hmm. I basically, my position is I'm an impartial third party, and I'm here to report on what I see. So the owners will hire us to come in and give them a, a report on the activities that are going on in their building, let them know if they're getting the materials that they're paying for, if it's being installed the way that they're expecting it to be installed, if it's being installed well, and if it's not, to tell them that it's not being installed well, right. and then to deal with the roofers on correcting that. Have you ever been in a situation whereby, uh, and we'll talk about the process of how things go to tender, mm -hmm. and, and eventually someone wins the job, mm -hmm. and they begin to work on the job. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been called in, perhaps uh, halfway through a project, and, and uh, gone up on the roof, and, and just observed some pretty... Uh, bizarre uh, practices and mm -hmm. had to had to actually stop people and go I don't know where you learned how to do that but that's the not not the right way to do that mm -hmm. and my client is gonna get really upset if you continue to do it the wrong way yeah. so can you stop it and back up and do it right from the get-go that all depends on how 
the contractor was hired and how we were hired because there's 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 legal implications that come into play as far as contracts so if if we're brought into a project and the contractor has provided his own scope of work and he's been hired independently of us right and we're then called in after the fact that contractor is is hired to do the work as per his scope of work which may be very minimal yes we'll come in and replace your roof with a, a torch on roof mm -hmm. that doesn't tell you much it just tells you they're going to take your roof off and put on a torch on roof but it doesn't tell you to what standards or how they're going to do it or what underlayment they're going to use or, or, or protection board or whatever they're going to use uh, is there going to be insulation and how thick and and all this sort of stuff so we're we're at the mercy of of what that situation what the is. contract terms are too basically right right yeah. what's a torch on roof uh torch on is your uh styrene butadine styrene roll membrane SBS. So Torchon is applied in, in two layers, basically. It's a rolled roofing that gets installed over top of usually a protection board okay. or an insulation or sometimes directly over the deck, the wood deck. Um, and then so the base ply goes down and then a secondary cap sheet layer goes on top of it. So whenever you see a building that has that very uh, fine granule surface on it, almost looks like a sandpaper, right. that's colored typically brown or gray right. uh, for our climate, um, that would be a torch on roof. So Are they usually flat then, Sean? They're flat in the sense that they're not a steep roof right. where they're relying on shingles, but they do go on slopes and and flat roof systems okay just uh, i just I, I the word torch on kind of mm -hmm. i had to stop you there and just go wait a second what yeah. does that mean it's, it's installed with a torch basically right air, ergo torch on but right. so they unroll the rolls and they heat the rolls as they're unrolling uh -huh, it okay. and by heating the roll it causes the back of the roll to liquefy and the surface that they're heating up may be um uh, the type of surface that can be liquefied as well. So the, they're bonded together. Oh, they're I actually see. welded together by doing that. Okay. So they're torched together. Uh, back to the, the to the question about what is the bu what involves uh, the bulk of your time at Interprovincial Roof Consultants. You're not a contractor. You're a mm -hmm. consulting firm. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what do you and your teammates spend most of your time doing? Well, I personally spend most of my time in the office. Um, I'm the guy that's basically steering the ship, and I'm managing the clients, I'm writing the specs, um, and, and I'm overseeing all the jobs that are underway. Uh, the guys that I have, uh, I have another guy that does condition reporting primarily almost. Uh, he's, he runs out and he does those reports on your roof that tell you where your roof is at, okay. uh, what you need to do if it needs repairs, and if it needs replacement, he'll recommend replacement, which means that then that job comes to me and I would start writing a spec if you hire us to do that. Okay. Uh, the other guys do the field inspections, so they're the actual guys that are running around town, going from job to job, and uh, doing the day-to-day -day inspections on the jobs. How frequently do you, if you take on a project and uh, it, you're going to see it right from start to to finish once the actual work on the roof because you've had got to you've got to submit a design it's got to go to tender some roofing company has to win the bid once all of that process is done and you're actually you've got a crew out there putting the new roof on or doing the repair work how much uh, how frequently would you show up to observe the progress of that project again that depends on how we're hired uh, we could be hired to come out every day okay uh, which sometimes is a bit redundant because the what happens from one day to the other may be a minor amount of work depending on the weather so we could show up on a, you know on the consecutive day and there's not much to write about um, on other jobs where they have a large production crew of 25 guys hey, we need to go every day and we sometimes need to go twice a day mm -hmm. so typically it depends on the size of the job and it's paced out at one site visit for every 3,000 square feet of roofing material installed. Okay. So we use that as a main gauge on how many times we're going to come out, but it'll vary even when we have that um, that increment because if there's more inspections needed in the beginning of the job, we have to go a little bit more. If the roofer doesn't understand the job, um, turns out the workers that were put on the job aren't very good, and all of a sudden there's problems, we're going to need to be there more often. Right, of course. So that, that periodic rate, which you, you know in a perfect world would be once every 3,000 square feet, might get shortened up in the beginning to once every t 1,000 square feet, mm -hmm. and it might get spread out a little more towards the end where they should have it under control. By right, right, as a confidence in their yeah. ability to do it right. It exactly. Grows. Okay. But this really goes back to who's selected as the contractor. Um, the contractors that we work with regularly know what we want. They know what we want to see. Mm -hmm. So it ends up being a more 
more to that one per 3,000 square foot increment because we know that they're going to be, you know, we've worked with these guys before. They know what to do on that roof system. So it's a matter of just catching their little mistakes, which are usually unintentional, but they happen. And we re report those, and then they fix them, and then so on and so forth. Our guest on this episode of Experts on Call is Sean Lang, the president of Interprovincial Roof Consultants. And it is the fall. Hard to miss, isn't it, huh? We've been in fall for, what, less than 48 hours, and <laughs> we got to break out the pontoons. What does that mean to a roofer uh, and, and a consultant in the roofing business, to, to say nothing of others in the construction business? We'll get more tips on how to handle fall and prepare for winter when we return here on Sea Isle 650. This is Experts on Call on Sea Isle 650.